Hi guys, God bless you all. It is Kimberly here and we are back with our daily devotionals. Um, I believe I will be with you guys all of this week. Um, I am not quite sure about Friday, but listen, if this is your first time joining us, I am Kimberly Brown Phillips, and this is Free Dance Ministry Resources. The purpose of this uh, channel is to provide you with daily devotionals, product reviews, tutorials, choreography, everything that, or, you know, everything that I can <laughs> share. Um, in regards to worship arts or dance ministry. So for those of you that have been with this channel for, you know, any length of time, guys, we made it to 2,000 subscribers. It's just, I'm so grateful and so, um, so blessed that you guys have joined this page, that you're watching this. I appreciate all of the comments. Um, all of that, all of the feedback, I do appreciate it. I read it all. Your words of encouragement really mean a lot to me. And thank you so much for the thumbs up too. Listen, if you are viewing this live, God bless you. God bless you. I was just about to say that. <laughs> Put in the city and state or country that you are viewing from. God bless you. God bless you guys. I see you, Florida. I see you, Trinidad. I was in Florida for Christmas and um, I, it was like a couple of days before Christmas till um, the 31st and I had an absolutely awesome time in Trinidad. I definitely want to come and visit. <laughs> So I have a couple announcements for you guys. This evening, um, I think actually a couple hours from now, I'm going to be doing a video. I don't know if I'm going to broadcast it live or if it's going to be just taped and then I'm going to uh, post it. A technique video, a technique training video for you guys. So I'm going to be doing that in a couple of hours. Um, but I didn't want, I still wanted to do the daily vlogs because the technique video might not be up for several hours. But listen, know that that is coming. So my goal is to get back on track with publishing one video each week and then, you know, doing the daily vlogs when we can. But we will be here around this time, again, depending on when my little one is asleep. God bless you. God bless you from Tennessee. God bless you. Um, between like 2.30 and 3.15-ish. That's when she's normally down. All right. Um, so my announcements. If you are in the tri-state area near Philadelphia, near Pennsylvania, near Jersey, Maryland, Virginia, listen, this Saturday, I'm hosting a dance gathering in Philadelphia. So if you can come, come. If you can come, come. I am going to put the flyer in the community tab um, after this. But if you're anywhere close, drivable distance to Philadelphia, this Saturday is really going to be something. Um, the intercessors and I prayed last night regarding it, and there was such a glory that fell upon us in prayer. It was like a blanket. The glory of God fell on us like a blanket. And that was just like, you know, just a taste of what Saturday is going to be like. So listen, if you can't make Saturday, we are doing a large worship encounter over several days in October. And I should have most of that information um, early next week. So I'll be able to give that to you guys. We, we have some hotels um, that we're going to partner with as well. So you can get cheaper room rates, all of that. Amen. So I hope you guys are excited. Um, so I told you about that. I told you about the video that's going to be up sometime today. Um, technique, uh, technique video for you guys. And then I think for right now, that's all that's going on. Um, I'm going to be sharing out of the book, um, introduction to liturgical dance. And I told y'all every time I share out this book, I feel like I am smacking the defeated foe upside of the head. All of that. Um, now, I do see the comment about needing advice. Listen, um, we have, for those of you that don't, might not know, CCD has a mentorship program. That's awesome. It's amazing. There are four mentors um, that are seasoned in dance ministry and seasoned in worship. Um, they're ministers, they're evangelists, and they are readily available to assist 
anyone that participates in the program. So if you're looking to have a mentor or someone that you can communicate with, um, you know, um, have sessions with, then email us. You can email ChristCenterForDance at gmail.com. Matter of fact, I'm just going to put that in here just in case anyone has any questions because I see the, um, I see I see the post about advice. Um, I'm very careful about giving personalized advice because unless I know you and unless, you know, um, I would just, just want to make sure that I'm not saying anything against what you've learned, what your pastor is saying or your overseer is saying. So we always um, position people to the mentorship program because then, then that's formalized and that's in order. Um, but if you have if, if you have questions about CCD programs or anything like that, I'm happy to answer all of that while I am here. Um, we will be great weekend. Great weekend. Oh, uh, we would be great. Weekend would love to have you. Um, Jarlin, I'm, um, you had a great weekend, I think is what you said. <laughs> great weekend. Um, but yes, so um, what else can I tell you? Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be sharing with you guys that um, it looks like we will open up another Christ Center for Dance, but it won't be in this country. So just stay tuned for that. God is doing some just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things. Um, but we are, we already have international students um, in the certification programs. We have students and graduates in nine different countries other than the United States of America. But now, you know, there are those that are, believe that, you know, they want to come fully underneath Christ Center and start a dance school underneath CCD, either making it a Christ Center for dance or positioning their dance school underneath Christ Center. So um, God is doing some fantastic things. Um, so, all right, guys. So listen, let me just share this briefly. And again, I'm coming out of the introduction of liturgical booklet. We're continuing our talk about the restoration of the Tabernacle of David. And what does that mean? for the liturgical dancer. Let me just scroll down here. So I'll make sure I'm not missing any of your comments because I wanna make sure that I'm getting it all. All right, um, this is in chapter seven. It's entitled Anointed and Skilled. Now, before I even go into that, listen, don't be nervous for those of you that feel like you are an unskilled dancer. Do not feel nervous or insecure when you hear um, phrases like anointed and skilled, all right? When I refer to skill, I really base it off of the general definition of skill, um, of technique, I'm sorry, which uh, comes from the Greek word skill. And it means the ability to use physical movement effectively, safely, and efficiently. So, your technique means that, you know, when you when you say I am a trained dancer, that means that you have acquired a level of skill so that what you do, the physical movements that God has given you, that you choreograph for, those movements you can do skillfully, you can do them efficiently, effectively, and safely. All right, so when you hear the word skill, or technique, don't go to, the, don't think about, you know, your professional dancers. That's their level of skill. That's their level of technique based off of what they want to do. Does that make sense? So you have to assess where do you believe God is taking you? What type of dance ministry do you have, right? What is your natural movement style? Where do you want to grow as far as your strength, your flexibility, your stamina, and then acquire that particular skill? Does that make sense? You want to make sure that what you are doing currently, that you can do it safely, effectively, and efficiently. That is technique. All right. I was talking to um, the uh, CCD uh, dance um, oh, 
uh, assistant dance instructors on Saturday about, you know, technique. Um, very, very, very short conversation with them, just encouraging them that, you know, don't base, don't say, well, I'm not a tech, I'm not a trained dancer, because you're looking at a professional dancer that dances eight hours a day that's been dancing at that level for 30, 40 years. You can't, it's just, you can't compare yourself to that, right? You can't. Um, and you shouldn't. You have to do what God, you have to do the movement that God has put in you to do. And you have to make sure that you can do that movement safely, efficiently, and effectively, right? When the Bible take, talks about, you know, David's Levites or those that operated in the tabernacle of David were anointed and skilled, or David was anointed and skilled, doing what David d did, he was skilled to do, he was trained to do. I hope that makes sense because I don't want you guys to be like, well, I'm not a trained dancer or I don't have this or I don't have that. So that disqualifies me or because I don't have this. God bless you, Georgia. God bless you, Maria. God bless you, Faith. Um, you want to make sure that you're not comparing yourself, right? I know it's different. I know sometimes you know, watching YouTube and watching videos, even going to dance concerts, you know, we do, you know, there's a part of us that compares ourselves. And listen, you, you, you can't do that. You can't do that because you have something unique and precious and special. There is movement within you that no one else can do. There's, you know, um, uh, choreographed masterpieces that are in your spirit that no one else can do. You just have to have the courage to pull them out. You have to have the courage to display them. You have to have the courage to sit with your choreography, right? Sometimes masterpieces come overnight. Sometimes they take nine months. So you, you have to be willing to, to, to just choreograph what's in your heart. Um, and have the, have the courage to, if you're like, you know, I want to learn this technique of dance because it's just going to enhance, listen, enhance what you already have, have the courage to do that. God bless you. God bless you, Nicholas. Have, have the courage. I, um, I might not have said your name right up. I, I do apologize. I'm like looking like really fast. Um, but have the courage have the courage to do that, all right? So this big statement in here <laughs> says, never neglect your creativity and how your body naturally moves. Don't neglect that. Don't crush it. Don't crush it, okay? Now, there are some things that you can do safely, um, Hence, um, the video that I'm gonna gonna be doing for you guys in a couple of hours is a technique training video, and my prayer is that it just enhances what's already in you. It enhances your natural movement style, right? You never want to completely change it, and you don't want to replicate someone else because that's them, right? We we often say that dance is a voice, right? That dance is a language. So you want to make sure that you're still being authentic to your voice, to your language. Um, your dance is your heart's response to the Father. Your dance is your heart's response to the Father. Listen, make that one of, you know, the, the thoughts that you have when it's time to dance. Your dance is your response to him. It's, it's, you are responding to his love, to his grace, to his power, to his deliverance, to him healing you, to him redeeming you. Your dance is your response. If those of you, if you're a dance ministry leader and you're kind of struggling with, um, with, you know, how do I bring my dancers out of performance mode? And, you know, how do I, you know, how do, how do I do that? How do I break certain things, certain mindsets that they have? Listen, tell them about their dance being a response to the father, right? You're not responding to the audience based off of what you think that they want to see, but you are choreographing, designing your dance based off of the choreographer's response to the father. Their dance is their, is their heart's response 
to the Father. Um, <laughs> this one sentence here says, dancing to a dancer should be easy. Dancing, just dancing to the dancer should be easy and natural. Therefore, you have a natural movement style that was given to you by the Father. Dance is a gift, just like everything else, right? Dance is a gift, just like, you know, people are gifted to sing, people are gifted to paint, people are gifted to, um, to you know, be a doctor, actually. They, they could have a level of, you know, a skill in what they, just natural skill, natural wisdom that God has given them. Dancers dance. Worshippers worship. That's why um, sometimes, guys, I I talk to worshipers and I talk to dancers because there are some people that dance that don't distinguish themselves as dancers but as worshipers, and some people are just I am a dancer. I dance. Um, dancing to a dancer should be easy because you've been gifted and graced by God to do it right? There is an unction that you have. There are certain, you know, in, there is a grace, there is an ease to dance that you have that other people don't have. Therefore, you do have a natural movement style. You have an expression that is within you that's been given to the Father. He's given you a gift of dance. And in that gift that he's given you is a language. It's 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 a way that you can communicate and articulate to him. Um, all right. And lastly, the last thing I'm going to say is, um, dancers must strive to minister with excellence and with movement accurately, accurately and safe and, and safe, safely. All right. Um, movement accuracy safely. What does that mean? We have to strive for excellence. Does that mean, again, it doesn't mean that you got to have your leg when you do your grind, bop, bop, ma, have to touch your nose. It doesn't mean that you got to do all this stuff. It doesn't mean that. It's meaning doing what you do in excellence. Doing what you do in excellence. Doing what you do and safely, right? Having a level of technique, again, which means you can do what you do safely. You could do what you do efficiently and effectively. Um, but in excellence. When we talk about the restoration of Tabernacle of David, you know, again, the Bible says that David was anointed and skilled. The people that he placed, they were anointed and skilled. They were consecrated and set apart to play into the Lord, to write unto the Lord, to compose unto the Lord. That's what they did. There was a level of sacrifice that they did. They submitted their bodies as a living sacrifice, Romans 12, 1, holy and acceptable to God. They consecrated themselves. They didn't count themselves as their own, right? But as an instrument that God would use um, to display his glory, to praise him and to worship him. When we submit ourselves as dancers to be groomed by God, to be developed by God, we're setting ourselves up to be used by the Father in greater ways. We are setting ourselves up. Listen, some of you in this season, I believe God is going to send you a mentor. Some of you will have to sign up for classes, not you know, not just CCD classes, but there are so many great organizations, Christian-based organizations out there now that you can get training, that you can equip yourself because in this debt, in this new era, this new debt, um, dispensation of time that anointed and skilled is going to go hand in hand, right? It's time for the dance ministers to really become educated in what we do, to not be so, you know, just up in the air with it, to not think of this thing as a hobby. But if God has given it to you as a gift, like I said before, dancers dance, it's a gift by God. God needs your expression on the earth. Every time you dance, you express who he is. It's a part of his character, a part of his being that the earth is seeing, that the earth is being reminded of. That's why you have to dance, dancers. 
you have to dance. That means that you may have to, you know, take some classes. You may have to, you know, go through some type of physical training. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I'm going to be doing in this season. I have a, I acquired a personal trainer now that I'm going to be working with to, because I feel like, um, the level of dance in my life is about to escalate again. I have seasons where it's, you know, low and then I have seasons that it's very high. So I have to get my body ready. And in closing, I don't like this is like my third close. <laughs> I'm going to read the comments in one section in, in one second. Um, just because no one is calling your name to minister doesn't mean that you're not supposed to be in preparation mode, right? Just because no one's calling your name to solo or to be a part of a team or, or do this doesn't mean that you just sit back and chill and relax, right? It's not a vacation. It's a time of training and grooming. Every time that I had a season where... Um, I'm always active in dance ministry. It's just a matter of active in what. Um, right now, I'm coming out of a season of heavy teaching, heavy impartation, um, heavy online teaching, heavy just teaching, teaching, teaching. And now I'm going into a season of um, dance ministry and teaching. Um, but every time I had that, you know, it was a season for me to train my body physically to be able, listen to this, to be able to withstand the new anointing, the new wine that's coming. Because the Bible says, listen, you can't put new wine in old wineskins. So ask yourself in your dance devotional time, what are you doing in this season to prepare for the new wine? Are you training? Are you up? Up, um, are you upping your level of study? You know, how, how are you, um, how are you relating to the topic anointed and skilled, right? What are you doing to prepare for the new wine? Because listen, it's coming. Amen. All right. So let me read some of the comments here. Um, I recognize that it is a gift for me and it's not worship. Okay, so um, the question is about um, prophetic uh, dance ministry and the ability and not being able to choreograph. Now, the thing is, you have to know, and I'm not saying that you don't know, if you're dancing prophetically or spontaneously, because they can look the same. I just did a teaching on this. I forget where spontaneous and it might have been here I, that's what listen guys i teach like all the time <laughs> prophetic choreography means that it is god speaking his will his in his intent and that's coming out in your dance or spontaneous which means it is your your heart's expression to the father which both of these you you might not be able to choreograph can you choreograph a prophetic dance Absolutely, because I, I do it all the time. I do dance prophetically, spontaneously, and I do dance prophetically, and I choreograph it, right? I spend time with the Father and meditate on what he is saying, and I'm able to choreograph a dance. Now, that's just me, but can you do it spontaneously? Can you dance prophetically, spontaneously? Yes, but the difference is you know what God is saying. If you're dancing spontaneously, you're just dancing. And that's beautiful because God needs that, right? It's still driven by the Holy Ghost, but it is not God himself speaking to the earth or speaking to his people, right? When you dance prophetically, his words are coming forth out of you. You know what he's saying. So if someone were to stop you in the midst of you dancing prophetically and saying, what is God saying? You should be able to have a word. And sometimes that can come from training because you need to study prophetic ministry in order to dance prophetically with excellence. Great question. Um, how do I recognize a gift in me? Yeah, yep. Yeah. You have to recognize that. Do you feel God's voice in it? Is God saying something? Are you able to write it down? Then you're then you know you could be like God is saying blah 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 blah. Or if it's spontaneously, you'll feel it within yourself. I feel joy, I feel, I feel this, right? But if you for all of you lovely um men and women of God watching, 
if you feel that you are a prophetic dancer or that you may be steady prophetic ministry. I'm telling you, it's going to bless you and help you so much. Um, okay, Maria, we'll see you later. Um, just confirm with God. Jar uh, Jarlene, I'm, I'm reading you. Just confirm with God. Amen. You're very welcome. From Trinidad, and I'm looking for a dance instructor. Um, we provide um, Mil Milsha. We we do provide online dance classes. Um, I do not know at this point any dance schools in Trinidad. If I did. I would definitely recommend them to you. But what I'm going to do is give you the Christ Center email address um, for general in in inquiries. Email that address and tell them that you're um, interested in dance classes and we'll send you all the information how you can take our virtual dance classes online so you can grow in your dance um, uh, tech, the techniques of ballet, modern, and jazz. It's typically what we do. We're adding African soon, too. Um, he tells me what to do as I am doing it. Um, do I consider myself skilled? My gifting is in the prophetic. Yes. Um, steady, yes. Yeah, steady prophetic ministry. Um, as you're uh, as you're doing that, if you believe that your gifting is in the prophetic, because then you'll see, and you probably already know this, how God speaks to us differently. There are some people that the Holy Ghost leads by the hand as they dance. You feel an unction to do something, or you you'll you may hear something, you may sense something. Um, it's really how does God speak to you and getting to know His His voice um, again. If God's voice is in it and he is saying something to people, that is prophecy. That's prophecy. If you're being led by the spirit of God, it's still being led by the spirit of God, but it is not prophecy. Prophecy, again, is God saying, God stating, God decreeing. There should be a voice. God's voice is in it. All right. So, guys. I got to go. I love this conversation. I'll be back tomorrow around the same time, around like 2.30, 3.15. But do you hear my little one in the background? <laughs> so let me go get her. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, DD, prophetic one. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, hold on. What's, I see she just stopped. Hold on. I just started dancing and I believe that I'm gifted. Yes. Jarlyn, if you believe you're gifted in the prophetic, what I did, I went to my pastor immediately. Like as soon as I was questioning, I was like, let me, let me go. I talked with, with my pastor at the time about how I was feeling, what I was sensing. And he was able to guide me through my the beginnings of my prophetic journey. So I would encourage all of you, if you believe that you are a prophetic dancer, you are probably a prophetic person, which means you operate either in the gift of prophecy, spirit of prophecy, or maybe have the office of a prophet. I would talk to your pastor to get guidance and and just see see what he says from there because he knows you or she knows you, right? They may be able to recommend us a prophetic school or a prophetic ministry because dance is just a vehicle for the prophetic. All right, guys. So I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.